Take it away, Amy. Welcome to Author Talk, you guys. We're actually doing it on time at 10. We didn't have any scheduling conflicts today. You guys know me. I'm Amy, and I'm here with Sandy and Russell, and we're just, it's just going to be us today. So everybody say hi. Hello. Hi, guys. Hello, Houston. I'm home. Yay. <laughs> well, we put, jo- we put Joanna on last week because yes. she came in, and usually we do this at just the first of the month. Yeah, usually. But this is how it worked out. Of course, today's spring break, Joanna would have been available on Monday if we'd even thought of that. I didn't think of it. To, I invited her to attend our Monday night class to see what it was all about. And she goes, can I take a rain check and do it next Monday? Because that's spring break. So, hi, Joanna. Hope you're home and watching Author Talk. And we have a great program planned for you today. Just the three of us. And we'd like to do this about once a month, just so we can bring you up to date on all the author stuff going on around the Houston area and where our friends and clients are located. So hi, Sue. I know Sue will be watching, although it's cold, cold. I got out of North Carolina just before the snow hit. So, yeah. It's cold here, too. It's 55. It was cold this morning. (laughs) No, no. That is cold for us. So, Russell, what you got going on you want to talk about today? Well, we have, I have several things I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about the Photo Fest before we... Uh, uh, it, it's a festival in Houston. It's pretty exciting. There was a really good article in the Houston Chronicle yesterday that I think that all of us should pay attention to. And uh, Amy's going to tell me all the things I did wrong on my failed attempt at an Instagram story. And then we're going to tell you about all about. uh, So you mentioned the Chronicle article. That was was that in your list? Okay, so great article in the Chronicle. And we want to have that be a lead in into where are book editors for all the newspapers and how do we get on their radar, how do we get them to review our books? So that's going to be one of the discussions today. And um, so, Russell, where do you want to start? Well, I wanted to start with what we did this weekend. Good. I was at a beautiful, the Sharma wedding this weekend. It was I a beautiful wedding. I saw post on that. Oh, my God, uh, that video is incredible. It, they, they are incredible. We can't share the videos on this app. So I can't do that, but uh, you start off, it's, a, it's like a 48, 72 hour wedding. Uh, we actually got a hotel room where the wedding was so we could come and go. Uh, it starts off on, one. Of, well, I guess it's in the middle of it. On Saturday morning, they have a thing called a barat, which is the uh, groom's wedding party, marches over from somewhere else and the groom is riding it was traditionally an elephant, but uh, our groom this weekend was riding a beautiful horse and the groom's po- wedding party marches over and the bride's wedding party is there and there's drums and dancing and they throw dough. It's, and that's just the start of the day. And then you have the wedding, then you have it's, and then we you had some incredible uh, Indian food. And the one great thing you can say about Houston we have great Indian food in this town. They had several different restaurants serving. It was spectacular. And in the video, the young guy was dancing. Um, and I love that. Is there a name for that dance he was doing? Because he kept on for a while. And I thought that was amazing. I loved that. The answer is, I'm sure there is, but I'm <laughs> too ignorant to know. Ah, okay. Well, you knew all those other words like barat and all of those words that you put in your post. So I thought you knew all of it. Joshua probably knows. He does. He probably does. That's true. Um, is that how they do Indian weddings in the United States all the time, Amy? I mean, because well, your wedding wasn't like that and you married someone from India. Well, he's a fir- his parents are from India, but I didn't want an Indian wedding. So we didn't do it that way. And Amy gets her way. Yeah. <laughs> what um, Amy wants, Amy gets. Yeah. Well, his cousin had a three-day Indian wedding. 
and she had uh, like an Indian ceremony where she wore her really nice sari and everything. And it went on for three days. And then on her actual wedding day, she wore a wedding dress. So you can, it just depends on if they want to go full traditional or combine it and things like that. So they just, it's kind of whatever they want. But a lot of the times, um, it's a family activity. So it's like their family and it's very family activity. Yeah. So usually they don't plan it. It's usually the families plan the wedding and then right. that's traditionally how it is. But it's like a big celebration. In India it's with elephants and like they invite the whole village to come and it's like a big they close the town pretty much. It's a big shindig in India. So and it's cool. beautiful. I think it's I think uh, I've gone to weddings from cultures from all over the world. I think it the Indian weddings are the most beautiful, in my opinion. Yeah, the saris are really pretty. Like the, in the, the wedding saris and things like yeah. that, they're very beaded and flashy. And they're really pretty and they're actually pretty heavy, but they're really pretty. They usually have three different ones. Wow, this has been a great discussion. I love that. Love discussing different cultures and well we live in houston we, we live do. in an international city and we have friends from all over the world heck amy's married to i i forgot that you were married and could have had an indian wedding amy because you know we live in an international city right <laughs> yeah but when you think of her last name that's a little clue <laughs> I love her. I don't last think name. I, love know, I don't think of Amy's last name even now as unusual. I guess because I have so many Indian friends. Yeah, it's yeah. just a name, right? Me too. Me too. Um, a lot of our it's doctors. a name that I never can properly pronounce. Yeah, but in India they don't have. From what my in laws told me, they don't have first names. So, like their name in India is just Ravi Chandran. So then, when they came over here, they had to pick a first name. They don't have first names in India where my in-laws came from. That's my well, understanding. I could be wrong, but that's well, what how did they tell the difference between them, the different people in the family then, if they all have the same name? I don't know. Because I think <laughs> with some of my friends who go by the same name, I actually have a lot of friends that go by the same name. They have little nicknames that go with the name that yeah. tells you which one it is. Yeah. Like, uh, I have a friend called Short Paul, and he has a cousin called Tall Paul. Uh, they're all. <laughs> Are they from India? Yes. Oh, yeah. well, cool. We have like big names and stuff. Right. Like my father-in-law's name is Ravi Ravi Chandran because he just shortened Ravi Chandran. And he picked like a first name and he doesn't use it. So it's just, yeah. And then that makes sense of why the guy that people quote a lot is Rumi, R-U-M-I. And so um, that's probably a shortened version of another name of his. So what are you showing us, Russell? This is a uh, festival. You know, we have festivals going on in uh, Houston all the time. And it's just a coincidence that this is an Indian festival, by the way. And then I went to the Sharma wedding this weekend. But this is a festival, the Photo Fest, and it's on for the next month. It starts March 10 to April 22. And they have art, photographic, and lectures all over town. Look it up if you're watching this and interested and interested in exciting art, edgy art, uh, and, and uh, I'm going to go. There's actually some really interesting lectures <laughs> on art, international art, and exhibits in town over the next month. I'm going to go to them. Are any of them right in your backyard? You know they are. I know. Especially over where Wright Fest is going to be. Yes, I have a feeling that's going to be some there. There's going to be some of the biggest exhibits for Photo Fest, and I think their offices is even over there. And the uh, and Write Fest is the Writers Festival in the end of April and May that both the Houston Writers Guild and Write Space are doing together. And it's going to go on for a whole week, and uh, it's going to be at the same place as a lot of the exhibits for Photo Fest. And speaking of that, we should probably have. Um, the new CEO on Author Talk coming up soon. All right, we should do it this month. 
Okay, I'll check with her. So, yay. So, news from Houston Riders Guild. We have a new CEO, Andrea Sanchez, and um, she is taking over effective immediately. And we, she will be continuing with this whole push because Houston Riders Guild is joining forces with Fright Fest Houston and doing a huge, um, well, they're taking Right Space Houston and they're creating Right Fest Houston. So we are excited about, about that um, coming up the end of May, April and May, April 30th to May 6th. So sorry, that was, my tongue got tied. I think my brain is tighter than I think it is because I'm starting to say something and anyway. Anyway, so we talked about the photo festival and that going on. Um, yay. Now, this is what we want to pay particular attention to, partly because of the article that Russell's going to explain to us, but also notice at the top of the page, books. And this is from the Houston Chronicle. So, Russell, what do you want to tell us about this article in the book section of the Houston Chronicle? Okay, before, and then you can go on and discuss uh, what you want to do in connection to with this. But this was in the book section, in the Zest section yesterday, in the Houston Chronicle. And it was about uh, a Harvard professor in his latest book called Enlightenment Now. And uh, he writes about the difference between a meaningful life and a happy life. And I did not expect to like the article. I didn't expect to like what he said. I liked the article and I, and I really liked what he said. And I would like to, I know we don't usually read something into the podcast, but this is, this is pretty good. The distinction between living a meaningful and a happy life is one that goes back to Aristotle. Actually, I think he's wrong. I think it's Socrates and that Aristotle was repeating it, but that's another story. Of course, the rest of the world will never know the difference. Most of the world, most of the world will you, you, will you would know, know that, that, and I think that's awesome. You're breaking up, Sandy. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you sound like, you sound like a muffled alien. Muffled. Is that better? Because I have the microphone thing. It's not better at all. <laughs> okay, what it is. Okay. okay. You keep talking, okay. I'll fix it. Okay. No, you're good. It sounded better. Right. And don't do again what you just did. <laughs> of course, there's a lot of overlap between the two. Generally, happier people lead more meaningful lives and vice versa, but they aren't perfectly correlated. When people have children, for example, their reported happiness levels go down on average, like significantly, I can tell you that. <laughs> but very few people regret having a child. In fact, uh, a lot of people say it's the most meaningful thing they have done in their lives, and the same can be true for other accomplishments, such as writing a book, are leading a campaign for political change. These things may prove frustrating or there may be setbacks, but they are often the things that make life more worthwhile. And that couldn't be more correct. Having children and being older and seeing them as successful adults, there's very few things as meaningful as that. Writing a book is can be, a if that's a part of who you are, can be an incredibly defining part of your life. Um, so one thing I'd like to add to that, if I do, I sound am I okay now? Clear. Okay. Um, is one thing that makes me more excited than my kids being successful and all of that is grandchildren. Are you like sending a message out? Yes, I love, 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 love. I have a granddaughter who's now a school teacher teaches fourth grade. I have a granddaughter who's moving to the Heights and who has a job in downtown Houston that she loves. And I have other grandchildren that are on their way to being successful. And honestly, I'm very excited that I have four sons who are successful and happy. And I have a new grandchild that will be born in April. So I'm very excited about that. 
anyway, just wanted to say that one thing to me that I love having grandchildren that are happy with their life. My mother would say the same thing. Well, and I was about to say that about Bola is she's all about her family. That's yeah. what's so beautiful about Bola. And somebody just told me, um, I think it was Sue, Sue Holly, when I had a call with her this week, said, don't you just love Vola? She adds so much to our classes. Um, so, Especially when she's ordering pizza <laughs> online <laughs> without <laughs> muting her mics and arguing with her husband and telling him what to do. And that was it. That oh, was hysterically so funny. funny. That was so funny last week. Okay, should we get to my failed Instagram story? Yes, I'd love to hear how you have failed. So before you talk about that, let's say that last week or the last time we talked about Instagram, Amy explained what a, what is a an Instagram story and kind of how to do it. And you were the first one of us, the three of us, that took off and did your own Instagram story. So this is a report that you were not happy with it. And you're going to talk about that now. Okay. Uh, so uh, I went to, I thought I would go to the livestock show because I go every year and I thought, well, and I told Amy last week, I was going to do a Instagram story on food at the rodeo. That's what I decided. Well, then when I got there, I wasn't really hungry. I couldn't really find enough interesting different uh, places. And so I thought, well, I will do one on the animals and more importantly, the people, because the people that are within the agriculture, cultural community showing at the stock show, they're just, it's like going to a movie if you watch them. And it's not because they're weird or anything. They, they're just, they have different rules of what's cool, what's not, what they do and their lifestyle. And it's so different than most of us urban people now, even though I don't sound urban, I can't get away from the accident, the accident. But uh, it's so different that it's just unique and interesting to watch. And so I took all these pictures, mainly moving pictures, because Amy has talked in the past about uh, that mo that video uh, is better than photographs. So I thought, well, I will post videos interspersing some pictures uh, if they were really good. Let's see here. Like uh, this guy that was asleep with his sheep. I thought that was pretty funny. He woke up as I took the picture. <laughs> but there, and so I, I took a, I took a stream and I started posting. So I was posting over and over and over on Instagram. At first it was more descriptive as I got, as I got the feeling that I was doing poor and poor job, I started making snarky comments as I posted instead. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Starkier comment, <laughs> especially there was these two little girls waiting for their turn to show their horses, and boy, were they going at each other, talking, to, in my imagination, talking about how the other one's shirt was not as nice as the one they were wearing. And anyway, but, and so I posted all these, and I got lots of video views. I got a uh, several uh, followers because of it, but I thought it was not enough story. It was just posting pictures. There were too many pictures posted at once. I wasn't happy with it. I know I failed. Amy, what I do wrong and how to misunderstand it. What do I do right? You didn't create an Instagram story, which is your top bar on Instagram. I tried. I couldn't figure out how to do that. So for Instagram stories, you can use that to go live. So you can't upload, I mean, you can upload certain videos to it, but the framing's not going to work if it wasn't built in Instagram. So you can do your lives and boomerangs and slow-mo and everything from your stories. Show on your phone where you can do that. Well, okay. Yeah, because I'm looking at my phone now and I want to see how I would do and it. And I pushed it and then it went to photography and I was like, 
And then I actually took a picture on that, Amy, and then it disappeared. I couldn't find it. So your top part right here, these right. are all stories, right? So if I click this one, okay, I don't know what it's gonna show you. Okay, so it's gonna it show your my, kitchen. Yeah, my back. I gotta find my photo. So I'm gonna take that photo. Right. So <coughs> bottom, see that? You probably can't. Let me turn my light off. All right. So down at the bottom, it says right here it says send to. Now I don't right. want to. And then it'll say save and it'll say your story. Right. Your story. Oh, that's what I didn't do. Yes. So you want to hit your story and then upload it that way. But the cool thing, so let's go back here. Down at the bottom, you can do like boomerang and you can kind of slide it. That's where you can do slow mo, the hands free, your live, everything. And you can add photos and stuff like that. So if you're wanting to take a video or whatever, and put it on your story and do a live, I would play with these. These are really popular, especially for marketing books and things like that. So that's how you do Instagram. It's kind of difficult to show you because it's on my phone, but that's how you use it. So the, you just messed up because you didn't put to your story. So then it just went to your- page. Okay, can you show me again? So I've got my <laughs> little boomerang and all that stuff down here. And once I select one of those, is that when I have the choice of selecting uh, my save into my story? Yeah, so like I'll do boomerang. I don't know what's going to happen. All right, so there's my boomerang, right? So down at the bottom, it says save your story and send to. You want to hit your story. All the right. Time. Okay. Yeah, so then once I hit your story, where am I at? See how it uploaded it? And then that's my messages. Okay, and then there's my boomerang. Oh, good. Okay. So, Russell, are we going to try it again? I'm going to have to fail several more times, I know. <laughs> you have to do it all from your top browser. So, on your top browser on Instagram, where you see all these other little circle icons, it'll say you. And you want to click on that one and play within that. And make sure that when you select your picture, your boomerang, whatever you're doing, make sure you hit your story. But how do you do your hashtags and your words that go with it if you do that? What? Put them on the screen. So you type it on your screen. So the difference is it's Instagram stories isn't a post. It's just a story that people can see on the top of their bar and you go into the public. Right. If you're wanting to do a post, that's where you physically type out all your hashtags and stuff like that. On the video or picture that you're doing in your story, it goes on the video. It doesn't, you can't single text it and make like, you know, a separate header. It goes on your actual photo or things like that. And it'll still trend and do things like that. It's just physically on the photo or video. Okay, I'm lost. I'm gonna have to work on this. Make sure, just work on getting it in your story. Once you get it, <laughs> you don't think it'll be fine. You just gotta get it in so. This is advanced up. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. great stuff. It's great stuff. Aren't we glad we have Amy to keep us on the cutting edge of social media and all the new, listen, this stuff changes on a daily basis. So six months ago, we weren't even thinking about an Instagram story. We never heard of it. One month ago, we had never heard of it. So here we are discussing it. And um, Amy, is there anything that you're starting to see that may be the next topic that we're gonna be talking about on um, social media? Well, there's different, there's new, uh things coming out for youtube live and i know i mentioned it beginning of this year and last year what i thought was going to be really big in 2018 and i'm still going to hold to it i really still think it's going to be youtube because youtube's come in to play in a big way so they've updated their youtube live and features and things like that so i haven't played with them yet i work i plan on doing that today it's in my schedule to do so i think youtube's going to become a big contender and i kind of feel like for me not that Facebook is dying off because Facebook's become more of a marketing platform. But as far as like social and kind of taking over, I feel like it's going to be Instagram and YouTube. Like those are going to be really big because videos are really wow. big. Wow. That's what you said is a big deal. You think Facebook is dying off as a personal social medium. Yeah. I think and it's that it's turning into YouTube and Instagram only for personal social media. Yeah, well, I feel like that because Facebook or 
marketing in general is becoming bigger in the algorithms for Facebook, or not for Facebook, but for videos and photos. And your big two platforms for that is Instagram and YouTube. So I feel like Facebook's becoming more of like a marketing standpoint, just because you have different algorithms that you're having to get in touch with and you can control your newsfeed and things like that. But it's kind of taking out they feel like they're at a personal level, but for me, it's taking it out because I can't watch like a cooking video without going through like say a minute of it. And then they put an ad in the middle of the video and then I get to see the rest of my video. So I have to watch the ad. So it's not becoming so much personal as it is more marketing. So for me, my personal is Instagram and then I'll go watch YouTube videos and stuff because they don't, the ads at the beginning, it's not in the middle and it's not things like that. So things like that are frustrating me where it's pushing me away from it. What do you see for what do you see for Twitter? Because it had like this little comeback. Is that going to continue to grow, or what do you think? I think by what I said on our social media, the best-selling author course, the social media segment last Monday is Twitter is a gateway to your other platforms. So you can build your Twitter followers really easily and just follow people that follow you back and things like that. But it's more of you know. Twitter's here, and then you're going to have Facebook and Instagram and like YouTube coming off of it, because Twitter's going to be your main platform to send them to your more popular one. So I don't see Twitter falling off just because it's a big um, gateway. It's a big bridge to your other platforms. I don't think it's as popular as it used to be. It used to be really popular. I don't see it that popular. And Amy mentioned just now that she shared all this on our how to be a bestseller or how to create a best-selling book last week. So she taught the entire course or entire uh, class and lots of great, great stuff on the three main platforms that we see for authors. And, and of course the others will, you know, they're going to come and go, they're going to grow. I'm really, really excited about what we're doing with this course and what I'm learning because one of the things I've you know, signed up for is being notified on some of these topics. And this morning, I got the one that I posted on Facebook, the 10 top most read books in the world. Now, if you want to look at that, that is absolutely an amazing thing to look at because some are fiction, some are not. It's not like here's the fiction top read and here's the nonfiction because the, the, the first one is the Bible. So, but number two is quotations from um, Mao Zedong. <laughs> I'm like, okay. And then after that is Harry Potter, the alchemist, if you're familiar with the alchemist, also a uh, gone with the wind, think and grow rich. The twilight zone is in there. I mean, not twilight zone, the twilight saga is in there. Twilight Zone is long gone. That's before your time. And I thought it was very interesting that the Da Vinci Code is in there because Dan Brown, who had been around forever, so I'm saying this for all of the authors, whether you're in our course or not in our course, hang in there because Dan Brown was an author and had multiple books out before he did the Da Vinci Code. And all of a sudden... The Da Vinci Code becomes very successful. The movie is made. And then people started looking for other books by Dan Brown. And don't you do that? When you read a book that you like, you look to see if there's other books by that author. And all of a sudden, his Angels and Demons became popular, written before the Da Vinci Code, and it became a movie. And now his last book, his latest, is Origins, which has been on the New York Times bestseller list now for eight months. So... Exciting, exciting, exciting stuff. And then when I saw that the Da Vinci Code is one of the top 10 most read books in the world, I'm like, okay, this is worth noting for every potential author out there, whether you've written a nonfiction, fiction, or whether you hope someday to write it, hang in there because... Yeah, and if Dan Brown can do it, you can do it. Absolutely. <laughs> and speaking of that, when is Russell going to have his second book? What's the status on your book, Russell? I am doing a re I'm in the rewrites. Uh, the first draft is done. I'm doing rewrites. And um, 
That's what I am. I'm a rewriter, not a writer. Okay. I'm, yeah. I have to rewrite and rewrite and rewrite till it's good, okay. acceptable. And I've already lined up my beta readers. Good. Yay. So, so there's a process that we follow. Um, and we follow the same process that Random House follows or Simon & Schuster. And that is, you know, getting your beta readers, getting feedback, right. rewriting the book. And so we're, I can't wait, can't wait, can't wait. So we have Sue Hawley. We'll have another book coming out right now. We have, you, one you know, we need to get Sue back on this. Is she watching? I have not seen her post a like yet, but I do want to say, well, since you mentioned that Joanna Jordan is watching. Well, hello, it. Joanna. So hi, she said, she, and then we have some new people, Gwendolyn McLeod, and Hello, Gwendolyn, Gwendolyn, we'd love to meet you, Mark Morbeck, have not seen him before, and then Valerie Sweeten is, um, is with us, so we have Well, Mark and Valerie, of, hello. Yes, yes, and Gwendolyn, enjoy. I, I already said hello to Gwendolyn. Oh, Okay. <laughs> So thank you all for watching. Um, and it is probably getting time for us to wrap things up. So um, any last words from you, Russell? Uh, yes, I hope to get, st I'm ready to get back to work this week. You know, I've been to Indian wedding all weekend. It was beautiful and wonderful. And I kind of, I'm kind of energized for the week from it. Well, that's awesome. And, I'm, and the black I'm cat. I'm back in Houston for a couple of weeks and then I'm, my, my work in North Carolina is not over. Um, so I'm going back in a couple of weeks, but I'm here and I want to do all the meetings I need to do and all that stuff for the next two weeks. So, and then Amy and I are going to be working for the next two weeks on our new community that we're launching in April. And the name of it is going to be, do we want to say the name of it or wait till we do an announcement, Amy? We should just wait. Okay. So you Facebook, could tell, you could tell in her not poker face that she didn't like that you were about to say it. <laughs> Stay tuned because uh, it may change some, but I've already bought the URL and everything. So stay tuned. We're going to be talking about our new author group, and um, it's it is a community, and we will be um, having our courses done through there. We have affiliate programs coming. So if you want to make money by inviting people to participate in our courses, all of that is happening. And Amy and I are going to be getting together over the next couple of weeks, getting the final, final step in place. So, yay. Amy, how do you want to, anything you want to close with saying today? No, I have a spring breaker home. So <laughs> That's true. That's all I'll be doing this week. <laughs> He's evidently super booked up. I don't understand. Well, you could you could just give him some blocks and let him, let him play. Then you can get back to work. No, we went to small grape and like they all booked him up for the week. So I'm like, I got to pencil in when I get to see my spring breaker slash husband. I got to pencil myself into his schedule. But no, well, I'm you, excited about it. That's exciting. That's exciting. So hi, Josh. Glad you get to be home for a week. Um, Josh is a student at University of Houston. In the what kind of engineering program, Amy? Chemical engineering. Chemical engineering. That's pretty impressive. It's it very impressive. Very, very impressive. So. Oh, I'm not that impressed with it anymore. I hear about it all the time. I know because you have to live with it, but it's to the rest of the world, it's very impressive. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. He's doing really well, though. He's in like the top 10% of engineers. So he's doing really well. Right. He better be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you guys have a great day and everyone out there um uh stay tuned join us again next monday at 10 a.m for author talk with russell amy and sandy bye bye